Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. What an absolute disaster the special election in the state of Alaska was. Republicans just lost a seat in the Alaska special election to possibly the dumbest election system I have ever witnessed in my life. It's called ranked choice voting. And on paper, at least the way that it was marketed to people when the people of Alaska voted for this system, it probably seemed democratic and logical. But in practice, I think people got a serious wake-up call as to why ranked choice voting is a complete disaster. Folks, in the Alaska special election, Republican candidates essentially got over 60% of the vote. The Democrat candidate, the sole single Democrat candidate on the ballot, got 38%. And the Democrat won. Over 60% of people voted for a candidate with an R next to their name. And the Democrat ended up taking the seat. Alaskans voted for ranked choice voting back in 2020. And frankly, I don't think people knew what they were voting for. Because this is the most garbage system I have ever witnessed. We've got some stuff to talk about, folks. As to why RCV is terrible or ranked choice voting. And how it creates an opening for all kinds of ridiculous shenanigans. Possibly one of the most undemocratic election systems there is. For those of you guys who are unaware of what's going on, let me fill you guys in. So let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so take a look at this. Democrat Mary Peltola wins Alaska special election. Democrat Mary Peltola has been declared the winner over former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin in an Alaska special general election. Peltola will serve the remainder of former GOP Representative Don Young's term in Congress, according to unofficial ranked choice voting results announced. The seat to represent Alaska's at-large congressional district became vacant after Mr. Young, who held the seat for 49 years, passed away earlier this year. The special election was only to determine who fills the rest of Young's term, which ends on January 3rd. Peltola, Palin, Nikki Bechik, and Chris Bai will face off in another ranked choice election in November. The special general election for the vacant seat in Alaska, which was held on August 17th, used ranked choice voting, a measure approved by Alaska's residents in 2020 that dismissed the state's previous election method consisting of partisan elections ahead of general elections. Elections. Due to the measure's approval, all candidates in the special election appeared on the same ballot, Fox News reporting. Ranked choice voting allows voters to rank candidates in order of preference on their ballots. Should one candidate receive a majority of first preference votes, that individual is declared the winner of the race. However, if no candidate wins a majority of first preference votes, the candidate with the fewest first preference votes is eliminated. Following the elimination of the candidate who received the least amount of first preference votes, voters' second preference choices are evaluated and a new tally is established to determine whether a candidate in the race has received a majority of the vote. That process is repeated until a candidate wins a majority of the vote, the report added. And so if it sounds overly complicated and frankly stupid, well, that's exactly what it is. Most people are visual learners, so let me show you guys exactly what happened here. This is essentially how the system works. We have 98.7% of the vote has been reported. So essentially, these are the final results. As you guys can see, this is the ballot. There's a total of 175,000 votes votes, roughly, and three candidates on the ballot. There's two Republicans and one Democrat. The Republican vote was split between the two candidates at 31.4% for Sarah Palin and 28.2% for Nick Begic, or Begic, however you pronounce it, and the lonely Democrat, Mary Peltola, received 38.9% of the vote. Meaning, in the end, in the final vote tally, Republicans won 60%, I believe even over 60% of the vote, the Democrat didn't even scratch 40%, and the Democrat ended up winning. How in any way is this democratic? Let's say Nick Begich decided that he wasn't going to run and he wasn't going to challenge Sarah Palin, and the vote was between Sarah Palin and Mary Peltola, Sarah Palin would have easily secured over 50% of the vote and won democratically, as Alaska is a 60% plus Republican voting state. But instead, the Republican vote was split in between two candidates, and therefore, I mean baseline, by virtue, the result of this terrible voting procedure and system, the Democrat won by by default. I mean, we're talking about some truly stupid stuff. Whoever invented this system probably thought that they were a genius. Probably one of those moderates we keep hearing about, those I'm in the middle on every single issue and partisanship bad. 
Which of course in a utopic ideal society and world it makes sense, but it certainly doesn't make sense in a world where there's Republican and Democrat parties, and you have a system that doesn't reflect that, and you have a system that runs an uneven amount of candidates on any given side, and creates a total tactical advantage for the Democrats as opposed to the Republicans. All the Democrats had to do here is say, let's coalesce behind one specific candidate alone, and the Republicans will automatically lose, I mean for Pete's sakes. This is the most easily gamed, absolutely stupid election system you could possibly imagine. I mean, the system can be gamed in a million different ways. Random people can just declare themselves Democrat candidates or Republican candidates, muddy up the field on one side, and where people vote as if it's a primary, Republicans split between two candidates, some Republicans like one candidate, some Republicans like another, the Democrat, if it's a sole Democrat, wins by virtue. Invert the other way, run a bunch of random Democrats on the ballot and muddy the waters, muddy the field, Democrat vote splits, Republican wins by virtue. How does this make any sense? How is this more democratic than a basic primary system where people vote for a Republican candidate in a Republican field, a Democrat candidate in a Democrat field, and then those two contenders face off in a legitimate democratic process, one candidate versus the other, two representing two different political sides and political stances, and the one with the majority wins. This is the perfect example of something that sounds really smart in theory, but in practice is a complete disaster. And if I'm not mistaken, Lisa Murkowski from the state of Alaska has been one of the main supporters behind the system of ranked choice voting in the state of Alaska or the push towards it. This is like some of that pseudo intellectual genius idea that somebody had when they were way too high on some sort of spirit guide trip in the mountains of Alaska. Oh dude, I have a genius idea to reform democracy and reform all of this divisive partisan stuff going on in our country, dude. It's called ranked choice voting. Except, of course, it's not a genius idea. It's absolutely stupid and it makes no sense. You know how I know it makes no sense? Because if ranked choice voting was used in the Wyoming election with Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney could have possibly won. After pulling her con to get Democrats to re-register as Republicans and vote for her, in a ranked choice system, all Liz Cheney would have needed to pass that finish line and be declared the winner in such undemocratic fashion is muddy up the waters. Just use all of her deep state money to launch a bunch of random campaigns and Republican opponents, market those people as Trumpian Republicans, split the Trump vote, and then by virtue Liz Cheney wins. Does that sound like the democratic process representing the will of the voters? I mean, in this election alone, if you take a look at the numbers, more than 60% of Alaskans voted for the Republican Party. They voted for a candidate with an R next to their name, and they got a Democrat as the end result. And of course, some people will tell you, of course it's democratic. They democratically voted for ranked choice voting. Yeah, but who was actually paying attention to the ranked choice system? Who knew the exact details and knew exactly how it was going to work? and how many people were unaware of what it actually meant. How many people voted in the special election in Alaska as if it was some sort of primary process and they were just voting to elect their favorite Republican, not understanding the actual system. And it's not to insult or demean people's basic level of intelligence, but not everyone is so tuned in and paying attention. A lot of people just show up to the ballot box and choose the Republican candidate. And in a place where you have so many more Republicans voting 60% Republican on the ballot and getting a Democrat, the end result just seems unbelievable believable, indefensible. It's a bad system. And of course, the headlines, now Democrats are running with this thing like it's a huge victory. Peltola's victory is a major upset in a state that voted for Trump by 10 points in 2020. And it makes her the first native Alaskan elected to Congress. Peltola will also be the first Democrat to represent the seat in nearly half of a century. They're making it seem as if it was a big, massive upset victory. And she overperformed a state that Donald Trump carried by 10 points when she didn't even get 40% of the vote. This is truly classic clown world stuff, folks. And if you ask me, Sarah Palin should be the rightful victor. If there was a primary process, Sarah Palin would have beat her contender, and Sarah Palin would have won in a head-to-head -head matchup against the Democrat candidate. That would have been democratic. That would have been a legitimate election process. Although, luckily enough, folks, it's only a small bump in the road because Don Young's term ends on January 3rd, and there's going to be a time frame here to rectify the situation. And I could pretty much guarantee you after this supposed up set victory, the Democrat candidate is not going to win in the election that follows in just a small period of time. But of course, like most things, we'll have to see how this whole thing plays out. But that's what I got for you guys in this video. And one thing I'm very curious about is your opinion. Let me know what you guys think about ranked choice voting in the comment section. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're up for it. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.